Who are a few of the worst people we'd love to kick out of society? Let's find out. Starting with number seven, the bus driver. In Newark, New Jersey, a public transit altercation spiraled out of control when a bus driver, identified as Torin Walker, was arrested following a physical confrontation with a passenger. The incident went down on a crowded bus one Friday afternoon, shocking everyone watching. Torin Walker, while on duty, got himself tangled up in a physical confrontation after a passenger allegedly spat on him. Spinning on someone is a legit insult in pretty much every culture, so it's unsurprising that it triggered a severe reaction from Walker, who subdued the passenger by pinning him down in a seat and then in the bus aisle. The escalation continued as Walker continued going after the passenger with force, using some pretty choice words the entire time. The fracas didn't end until law enforcement finally intervened. Police boarded the stop bus at an intersection, and upon arrival, they discovered Walker still engaged with the unnamed passenger. Since Walker appeared to be the aggressor, he was quickly arrested and charged. However, the passenger faced similar legal repercussions, also getting charged for his initial aggressive act against the driver. Despite the way everything escalated, it was reported that the passenger wasn't seriously hurt. In response to the incident, New Jersey transit officials emphasized their zero tolerance policy towards any form of physical confrontations against transit employees or patrons. They discussed the serious consequences of such actions, which can include fines, imprisonment, and prohibition from using transit services. So who do you think needs to be kicked out of society here? We agree that spitting on someone is a pretty serious offense, but do you think it warranted the kind of reaction it got? Do you think that the bus driver should be fired for his role in the altercation? As of the release of this video, the case is still ongoing. So let us know what you think in the comments below. Number six, the dental assistants. Three employees at Premier Dental Group in Knoxville, Tennessee, got what was coming to them after a video surfaced showing them mocking a cancer patient's private diary. The video, recorded by a colleague, captured two female staff members reading the patient's concerns about her radiation treatment options aloud while a male employee sat by, absorbed in his phone. The incident, which took place in the bustling office, was rightly lambasted on social media for the gross violation of privacy. As the footage spread, the dental practice issued an apology, acknowledging the disrespect and unprofessionalism shown towards the patient's medical condition. They described the incident as contrary to their standards of respect and professionalism, which is like, well, we'd hope that would be contrary to their standards. Following an internal review, the two women involved were terminated from their positions immediately, while the guy, who didn't participate in reading the diary but sat there like a loaf, somehow kept his job. In addition to this privacy violation, the practice had previously settled a lawsuit where they were accused of unethical behavior towards patients. Allegations included using unqualified dental hygienists and unnecessary treatments, likened to treating patients like cattle to boost profits. This lawsuit concluded with Premier Dental Group agreeing to pay out about $1 million, showing a pattern of very questionable practices at the facility. What we don't get about this whole mess is what could possibly be so funny about a cancer patient's diary. Obviously grabbing it and reading something clearly meant to be private is wrong. And then to laugh about their concerns about cancer treatments of all things is just weird. It seems like someone in the hiring department needs some assistance of their own, since they're clearly inept. Seriously, it sounds like they'd be better off hiring some reality TV stars. At least then the idiotic drama would be expected. Number five, faking disability. New York resident Arik Matatov was rolling in controversy after he tried to scam nearly 50 Manhattan stores, including high-end retailers such as Christian Dior. Over a six-week period, Matatov, who supposedly used a wheelchair, sent threatening letters demanding $50,000 from each business, threatening to sue over their lack of accessibility for the disabled. Matatov, accompanied by a friend who documented these visits, claimed these establishments lacked necessary accommodations such as ramps or elevators. 
His actions, backed by his attorney, Jeffrey Neiman, initially appeared as a strong push for accessibility rights. However, the fact that Matatov could actually walk without issue hurts all of his crusading. Eyewitness accounts and photographic evidence from the post expose Matatov's ability to walk unaided, which he displayed during a surprise visit by a reporter. The backlash, of course, was immediate and severe. Businesses that had been targeted by Matatov and had faced significant financial pressure to settle out of court were pretty upset over his little shakedowns. Legal representatives from affected businesses labeled the lawsuits as extortion and criticized the misuse of the legal system. The situation escalated when several businesses sought to have the lawsuits thrown out and demanded fines against Matatov and Neiman for their fraudulent claims. Amidst growing scrutiny and evidence of his actual physical capabilities, Matatov agreed to drop two of his $5 million lawsuits against major retailers. The remaining legal battles continued, with calls for stricter oversight to prevent such exploitation of disability laws in the future. Throughout the ordeal, Matatov lived a relatively modest lifestyle, yet the potential financial gains from his settlements could have supported a far more lavish existence. It's crazy to think that this clown could have possibly won a lot of his lawsuits because it's possible that these businesses weren't actually compliant with regulations. That said, there's a big difference between demanding that a business makes themselves more accessible and attempting to sue these businesses. Number four, historic art. In separate events, two unnamed people in Europe demonstrated a blatant disregard for historical artifacts, an act that pretty much any reasonable person would be careful not to do. A 39-year-old Spanish man, who clearly should have known better, got investigated after damaging ancient cave paintings. In the serene Sierra Sur de Jean mountain range of southern Spain, this unnamed Spanish man tried to improve his social media profile by exploiting the region's ancient cave paintings. Using water to make these artworks that thousands of years old more photogenic, since that's clearly what matters when you're looking at cave paintings, he caused irreversible harm. This act, documented through his Facebook posts, has not only outraged everyone who saw them, but also brought on a thorough investigation by Spain's Guardia Civil, a Spanish law enforcement agency responsible for various public safety duties, including the protection of the country's historical heritage. Parallel to this, Florence witnessed a brazen act of cultural disrespect by an unnamed young German tourist. In an attempt to capture a daring photo, he climbed the protective barrier of the 16th century Fountain of Neptune, a central piece in Piazza della Signoria. His actions, captured on surveillance, led to his detention by local authorities, illustrating a growing concern over the preservation of publicly accessible art. Both incidents show the annoying trend of dumb people compromising significant cultural artifacts for social media posts of all things. Social media is fun and all, but these influencers' selfish, constant need for status and likes shouldn't come at the expense of making things worse for everyone else. Number three, the cowardly act. In the Bronx, William Bollinger and Tammy Moore were charged for going after an 82-year-old home health aide. The suspects are said to have physically harmed the elderly woman without provocation, ultimately leaving her with severe injuries. Both suspects, aged 32 with a history of previous arrests, eight for Ballinger and 10 for Moore, were suggested by prosecutors to be held on either $30,000 cash bail or $90,000 bond. However, judges Eugene Bowen and Craig Ortner opted for supervised release instead because, well, we don't know. This seems stupid to us too. This decision has sparked considerable outrage among the victim's family and community members as well, since they're all concerned about the potential risks the suspects pose after they were set free. The victim, who was recycling some bottles at the time of the incident, suffered multiple injuries which led to her being hospitalized at Jacoby Medical Center, where she was listed as being in stable condition. The family, unaware initially of her whereabouts, were scared out of their minds until she was located at the hospital. 
The judge's choice to release the suspects was defended by the state's court administration, explaining that their discretion under New York law to make these types of decisions based on the defendant's flight risk, and apparently nothing else. However, this rationale hasn't eased the minds of the community or the police union, which has previously criticized Judge Bowen's decisions in similar cases. As of the release of this video, the suspects await their next court date, and the debate continues over the balance between judicial discretion and public safety. It certainly seems that not many people are worried that they're going to run away, right? It's clearly more that these two people just need to be kept away from everyone else and deserve to be locked up if they are indeed guilty. This lady was still helping take care of others at the age of 82, and these two took that away from her for no reason. Number two, the truck driver. Dylan Fogel, a 25-year-old from North Carolina, got hit with serious charges after his inexcusable actions that occurred outside a Tampa Bay Gentlemen's Club. Fogel, reportedly involved in a dispute inside the Emperor's Gentlemen's Club, was kicked out along with his friend Anthony Metelski for some inappropriate behavior. This altercation escalated tragically when Fogel, who was driving a semi-truck, crashed into a group outside the club resulting in the tragic passing of 44-year-old Giovanni Soto and serious injuries to two others. In the early hours of that particular morning, security footage showed Matelski becoming aggressive with the club staff. Shortly after, Fogel drove his truck into a crowd waiting outside. Witnesses suggested that Fogel might have been targeting his friend amid the chaos, which he wasn't. But before the crash, Fogel texted a childhood friend implying his awareness of impending doom with messages such as goodbye and acknowledging his likely prison sentence. After the crash, Fogel showed signs of alcohol impairment and admitted to police he was behind the wheel, though he claimed the truck's accelerator malfunctioned. However, his inability to provide an actual reason for not avoiding the crowd raised suspicions about how much of this was an accident. Fogel's actions contrast sharply with his background. He was described by friends as someone who lived a bit on the wild side and that his job driving semi-trucks was his self-proclaimed dream career. The incident left the community and Fogel's friends struggling to reconcile the man they knew with his actions that night. Number one, the spoiled rich kid. Florida teen Luis Berrios got slapped with multiple charges following incidents involving his unruly behavior on his father's boat. The arrest was catalyzed by his disruptive antics at the Sunset Grill, where he and his friends harassed staff, escalating to a confrontation with law enforcement. Berrios, known for his opulent lifestyle, showcased on Instagram to his followers, was documented by police body cam footage during a particularly chaotic scene. As the officers approached his father's yacht in Marathon, Florida, they demanded he halt the boat and surrender. Ignoring warnings, Berrios antagonized the officers, claiming he had anxiety and paranoia as excuses for his refusal to comply. His continued defiance escalated to threats against the police, only adding to his charges. Local residents and the responding officers described Berrios as a constant problem in the community, talking about his entitled behavior and frequent disturbances. Apparently, Berrios' pattern of behavior wasn't exactly new in the area. Neighbors expressed frustration, describing him as a, quote, spoiled brat, despite his father's hardworking reputation. Berrios was eventually arrested and faced charges, including possession of alcohol by a minor, disorderly conduct, and fleeing police by boat. His behavior remained defiant at the police station, where he continued to make threats. At one point, he shouted that his dad's rich, and of course, emphasized with the curse word. Obviously, that didn't impress any officers, although one of them did say, congratulations, sarcastically. The incident, which was captured on body cameras and widely viewed on YouTube, quickly overshadowed Berrios' social media influence drawing public outrage and criticism. Viewers condemned his actions for seeing a grim future if his behavior continued unchecked. Probably one of the most annoying things about this story is that even though this kid was arrested and charged, 
it's not likely his behavior will change. Until his enablers stop his annoying behavior, the rest of society will just have to continue to have to put up with the entitlement. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comments section what you'd rather have, $4,000 a week for life or $2 million cash right now.